Syndicated Pipe Club and Maple City Pipecast. How are you all doing tonight? We are alone because, well, Thanksgiving weekend. And that means no badger. But hey, that's okay. I have something that I want to talk to everybody about on both feeds. Sorry, Maple, Maple City, that I missed you this month. It was just a hectic month with... Uh, doctor's appointments and kids getting a little sick no covid fortunately but you know things happen little housekeeping tonight i, I am smoking my little yellow bowl nose warmer bent pipe but the only bent pipe i can clench and in it some ghost of the black bayou which is f and k's black bayou mist Mixed with Haunted Bookshop at 50-50 ratio. Buy those two tobaccos, you can make what I'm smoking here tonight. Okay. So, what's going on? Yeah. I came up with a new project, and it was something I've been thinking about for a little bit. And I don't know exactly how this is going to play out. We all talk about tobacco storage on our pipe podcasts here and there. You hear it on Country Squire Radio a lot. Brian Levine's talked about it with various people on Pipes Magazine radio show. And the consensus tends to be, and I do all my bulk tobacco storage this way as well, we have mason jars, glass mason jars being the preferred method for mid to long term storage. Now, of course, we all know that long-term is a subjective thing. We don't, you know, we, we all have, have a limit as to how, how we do things, a, a time frame as it were. Where the tobacco comes up in a, a range, you know, where it's no longer smokable. Well, there's that, and that's not what I meant. There's a range where tobacco is at its peak. You know, some things is 10 years, some things, you know, five, you know, where you get nothing but, you know, a mild smoke out of it. As you can see, this is a very smoky tobacco. If you are watching the YouTube channel and syndicated, if you're not, well, just trust me, it is smoky. But there's a range where you you get your um your lifetime, your shelf life, as it were. I got some things here that have been sitting on for about five years. I smoke them here and there. But I am not what you would call a heavy smoker. And I have a lot of tobacco. For me, I got about 10 years worth, I think. Maybe more, depending on if I can find a better storage method. So, what I'm looking to do is an experiment, a test of a, of a new thing I thought of. And I've never, I've not heard of it being done. But uh, I'm going to give it a try. I'm assuming somebody's thought of it. But what I have here is a little vacuum packed package of tobacco, which I'm testing. The white you see here is, or is washing out, is uh, par parchment paper that you uh, use for baking. My wife uses it, it's something we have on hand. I put it in here to put as a barrier between the Ziploc plastic. This is a Ziploc plastic bag that I vacuum sealed. Yep. And I wonder a couple of things. Is this going to last better or longer or just as good anyway as storing tobacco in a mason jar? Or on top of it, if it does last, is it going to pick up flavor from the packaging itself? This is what it looks like in 
without the packages for my week three. I've got another one here that I'm going to smoke at the same time, roughly. These two are packaged differently, one without, one with parchment paper. And we're going to test out and see what we get here. So, when this episode comes to air, I will be smoking the week one package, which is the first one I showed you on that particular Friday, which is coming up next week from recording time. According to this, day after Thanksgiving in America. So, first Friday in December is when I'm going to be opening this one. I just packaged all this today. I'm going to check my dates. Uh, yeah, so December 4th, I'll be cracking that little little one open. And I'll be doing a bit of a, a test, you know, to see what we got going on. And then in three weeks, just the week before Christmas, I will do the two I just showed you. And that will continue on for two, six weeks, nine weeks, and 11 weeks, which will put us on February 12th, where I open the 11 week ones and smoke that just before my birthday. It's about two months, basically, two and a half. All December, all of January, half, of, yeah, two and a half months. And uh, we're going to see what, what goes. And then I also have one set aside or two packages set aside for the six month mark. So we'll revisit those in May 2021. And we'll see. If I get favorable results, I might start packing up some of my bulk this way. Just, you know, just see. Oh, and, uh, I've got a couple other things I tried too that I'm just going to leave sit for a little while. And it's tobacco I don't smoke. I've got about an ounce and a half tobacco. See, I'm looking to shrink my storage space a little bit. The jars are nice for display and whatnot, but you know what? If I can find a way to save some tobacco a little bit more long term, like say, you know, package this up, say open it in five years, vacuum sealed, it should taste exactly the same as it does the day you put it in there, the day you take it out. Theoretically, that's what we're looking to test. Now, what I'm smoking in this is my English graveyard. That is basically my leavings jar from various tobaccos that I've smoked over the years. These are all English. You can do it with aromatics or whatever you want, and we'll see what goes. So that's what I'm after in this little experiment. Something very close to, similar to the tobacco pressing experiment I did on the Maple City Pipe Channel, now syndicated pipe club. And uh, yeah, this is what we're gonna do. So. Hope you guys will follow around and follow this. And I hope uh, we, we get something out of it. All right. Anyway, everybody, good entertainment, good smokes. And Greg will be back with me next week as we discuss Mandalorian Episode 7, Season 1. Places, things, children, pets, imaginary friends, metahumans, metatechs, speedsters, tricksters, pranksters, jokers, lobsters, mobsters, photographers, tripods, monopods, cephalopods, decapods, pea pods, construction pods, inspection pods, starships, spaceships, sailing ships, federations of planets, galactic empires, worlds of wizards and witchcraft, worlds of sci fi, Jedi, pirates, diseases of thieves, plants, bugs, orcs, elves, gnomes, fairies, or chickens named Larry were harmed during the making of this program. If you enjoyed the show, this has been a DR Allen to a one production. If you didn't enjoy this show, this has been a Canadian national all-inclusive choir production. Thanks for listening, everybody, and have a great day. Mm -hmm.